Welcome back, and today we are playing out the F3H Demon, and it's made for the Seaman, of course. It's a carrier-based aircraft, and it looks about as well as it flies. Now, some people think that this thing looks beautiful, but, you know, you have people for everything. The main issue with this plane is the energy retention, as well as the fact that it doesn't accelerate all that quickly. It flies a little bit like the Super Mysterio B2, which you might know that I'm also not a big fan of. And because of this attribute, you have to play this thing very slowly by keeping it fast. And that's why today's video is quite a bit longer than they are usually. Because I wanted to include the actual games where the plane is being used, I think, to its fullest potential. Dogfighting, being fast, like cutting down entire teams is not really made for that. It can do it if you get like a good position like in the intro clip right here. Then yeah, you can get a decent amount of kills and like that it's a little bit of a frag mobile. But it's down to a little bit of luck. Of course positioning is an important skill and you need to do it properly. But at the end of the day, where the enemy planes position themselves and what they are going for is kind of down to a little bit of luck. Of course you need to still react properly. But if you run into a MiG-21, T2s, MiG-19s, Huntref 6s, you know G91Ys. While some of those planes might not be able to outright catch you if you are both doing a top speed contest, in practice they are going to catch you basically every time. If they play it smart, you're going to be out of energy and you can't really retaliate whatsoever. If they don't play it smart, you're still going to be out of energy. You might be able to reverse them if you're lucky. But at the end of the day, you're still going to be going about 200 kilometers an hour at the end of this engagement. And everyone knows why the F3H just got down to it. And thus, you're probably going to get swarmed by the entire enemy lobby. They will simply spawn behind you the second you hit 800. It's like having a scripted event in a single player game. It is rather annoying and it makes it very tedious to play. Which again is why today's video is quite long and it doesn't have that many matches. Overall, the flight performance is not the main selling point here. What is the main selling point? Maybe it's the avionics. Is it the radar, RWR, stuff like that? Also, not really. The radar is limited. It's, of course, a search radar. It's a low-tier search radar, so it's a little bit finicky. ACM has about 9 kilometers of range. Of course, no pulse Doppler, so it's very hard to track anything below, like, 2 to 3 kilometers, unless you're shooting basically straight up at them. And, of course, it's paired by the AIM-7C. Now, this is probably the most unique part about this vehicle. However, the missile isn't that fantastic. As I said, the radar is a little bit finicky. It's a low-tier radar. It's not... Nothing to write home about. But the missiles do have a little bit of a use. Especially at like longer ranges. In the head-on. Because the diamond only burns for very shortly. The rocket motor isn't very powerful. It launches off the rail. It basically instantly cuts out. And at this point it will act like a landmine. And because almost no one has RWR at this BR. What ends up happening is that they just kind of fly up into them. Especially at the start of the game. Later on in the game, if you still have missiles left, what you can do is bring the fire to higher altitude. Because you do have an afterburner. And the AOA is pretty good. So if you get them high enough, you basically stall them out. It's very hard for them to defeat the missile. Now bear with me, it's only this clip that's going to be a replay. I didn't record it, but I wanted to show you the long range head-on stuff. Because that's what this missile is kind of made for. So we lock onto the Saab 105. We shoot it at about 10 to 9 kilometers. And we shoot it up. We loft it. There we go. The motor burns out. And now the enemy will not get a diamond. So very often they just kind of forget about it. And if you keep flying straight at the enemy that you shot it at. There's a very big likelihood that they try to go head on with you. And here you see that the second he tried to roll over to shoot at us. He took the missile directly up his forehead. And that's really the main use of the AIM-7C. Now luckily you, you only have to replace AIM-9Bs for it. So you're not really missing out that much. So personally I was carrying two of them. And then two AIM-9Bs as well. Because carrying more than two AIM-7Cs also feels like a bit of a waste. And the AIM-9Bs, people that aren't paying attention. Or people that are stalled out and don't have flares. The AIM-9Bs and more than sufficient. So here we just kind of fly up over the entire enemy team. And we notice the MiG-15... Kind of on his lonesome climbing to the side. So there is a chance because I'm so far forward and I kind of rush straight in that he is not going to be paying attention. So what do we do? We kind of just pull straight for him. Now he's actually not paying attention. He doesn't even know that I'm here. Missed the first burst because the guns are very awkward to aim. They are positioned low. They are a little bit further back. Not incredibly far back. But, you know, just far enough to throw you off. The plane is also very awkward with aiming. The rudder doesn't feel very responsive. It kind of flops about like a beached whale. 
and overall it's not very snappy it's very sluggish let me go for the f100a instead of all the other planes because i don't want to deal with that thing in the late game take him out for dinner mig 15 crashes into the massive mountain over there and we just kind of leave and this is the way you want to play it as much as possible keep it in a straight line run away from the fight re-engage once you are free you do not want to get into 2v1s 3v1s or anything more than a 1v1 with a lot of planes you don't even want to get into a 1v1 it's good to have teammates around in this thing because if you don't if you start engaging someone and someone else shows up there's a very big likelihood that you will cope and die three people here on my friendly f3h i'm not really entirely sure what to engage here so i wait for him to dive out so i can get six position here and perhaps sling off some nine bees but everyone is turning I can't really engage anyone here, so I'm going to break off and go for the Super Mysterio because it looks like he doesn't really know that I'm here. He reacts for a second, then he straightens out again, so I have a feeling that he's just looking forward to the A4E, and just like that, he catches the A9B and goes back to the hangar. So we do the same thing again, we go straight up, we store the energy in our balls, and we just kind of, you know, wait for another opportunity. So we have a Venom and a MiG-15, they're both going reasonably slow, so we should be able to engage them somewhat safely now the issue is that the f3h is going to die right here so now they are probably going to focus their attention on me and it's going to be very hard for me to kill them because they can dodge me very easily and if i overcommit, i will be going too slow and get killed by the second dude so here we dive on the mig 15 he kind of flies predictably he can't roll very well we predict where he goes we take his wing not off but he's quite heavily damaged and, you know, just to show you how poorly he is flying at this point. And he's essentially falling out of the air. He doesn't have any energy left. Probably killed his engine. He's stalled out. And he knows that he is completely boned. So he just kind of tries to go for the shot. Runs out of energy. And then bails out. And that's all we did for the rest of that match. Now, yes. Welcome back to everyone that skipped forward. Because they don't want to look at a replay. I understand it. It looks absolutely hideous. The rest of the video won't have any of that anymore. So here we engage a MiG-17. Now the MiG-17s are very annoying to deal with. But right now he's engaging an A4E. So he's probably not really going to be paying attention to me. He's trying to get the shot. But he kills him instantly. And now probably starts looking around again. So the second we get close enough he notices us. He's going to start to roll out. And I compress a little bit here. A little bit of cloud. Can't really see him. Plane doesn't want to go there anyway. So we just kind of leave without doing anything. So I see the MiG-19 coming in. Keep looking behind in case I get missiled. Want to go ahead on with him 19, but he doesn't want to take it himself, so we shoot like a few rounds. He breaks off, and there comes the G91R4. Now we need to make sure that we don't use too much energy to dodge his missiles. So what I want to do here is pre-turn a little bit. Makes it so that he can't lead the missile, makes it harder for the missile to pull in, and it just makes it basically useless if he starts shooting M9Bs at us. But it's a G91R4, so that it's a very big likelihood that he's going to ripple all four of them off. He doesn't in this case, and we simply leave... Kind of for free. But I can't really re-engage him. If I try to turn around fast, I run out of energy and he kills me. If I do a very wide loop, he basically just ends up staying on my ass. So we're going to keep it as straight as possible. If you don't get cancelled by Twitter, you're not going straight enough in this plane. You really cannot take any engagements whatsoever. Unless, of course, the situation arises. And I have plenty of examples of that. In a minute here. So the F30. F30. Yak 30 goes underneath us. He runs away. He kind of you know dodges the angle. And that's all you need to do. Right now I can of course kind of energy trap this guy. So I go for the shot here. We miss everything because I'm bad. And we just disengage again. The enemy team is coming in again. So I can't really take the fight with the Yak 30. The Yak 30 isn't anywhere near fast enough. So we kind of just leave. Dodge the MiG-17 coming from below. MiG-19 is ignoring us. And here we just go straight up. We energy trap everyone. MiG-17 is never going to be catching me in this kind of engagement. There is the other guy that I was missing. And we just turn around again. These are the last four guys in the enemy team. Other than like one bomber that just went RTB. So we should be safe for now. MiG-19 really presenting himself. And definitely the most dangerous plane in the enemy team right now. So I want to kill him first. But I don't want to tunnel vision too much. Because as you can see the MiG-17 below us. Is also engaging the J32B. So here the MiG-17 takes priority. Because if I go for the MiG-19 now. I simply die. MiG-17 isn't paying attention. He's focused on someone else. And after that the MiG-19 tries to go vertical directly in front of us. So I just kind of go for him. I lock him up for the missiles. But you know 
I'm really only locking him up in case he tries to keep going vertical like this. So I can actually shoot him down with the AIM-7C. At this kind of range, if he has some speed left, it's very easy for him to dodge him. I feel like I'm confident enough at this point to hit him at those speeds at that range. It's a little bit finicky with this plane. Then he levels out and I would have shot an AIM-7C at him. But he builds out just in time. And that's going to be the kill on the MiG-19. Now the last guy here is going to be the G-91 on the deck. And because this plane is so incredibly fast, we of course reach him in about 4 seconds time. Now he's engaging the Super Mysterio here, I want to save him. But you know, I'm just a little bit too late. I had to glide in here without any afterburner. I'm trying to cool my engine, I'm trying to conserve some fuel. And I was just a little bit too late because of that. Luckily he's so slow that we should be able to just kind of pick his plane apart right here and now. So he goes back to the hangar as well. And then I have the last AIM-7C showcase for you, at least of this match. And we see the Q5. Now we're going not that quickly. We have to conserve our speed a little bit to turn after him. So I'm going to try to lock him up here. And see if I can shoot an AIM-7C at him. Now he's going quite a bit faster. But you know it's a radar missile. So you would think that at about 1.5 kilometers or 2 kilometers. That this missile might actually be able to reach him. Now the answer is no. No it won't. It, it will not reach him. So... Because the burn time is so short, it's absolutely massive. It doesn't retain energy very well. It's going to basically, you know, stop having energy at about 500 meters away from him. A little bit unlucky, but you know, in terms of showcase purposes, it's good for you to know that these missiles have absolutely no range. They are essentially like AIM-9Bs in that regard. Maybe AIM-9Es, but the range is absolutely pitiful now i noticed the t2 he is spotted he is blind hunted actually so there's a very big likelihood that the q5 will actually go vertical for him which is great so we lock him up here you kind of wait for him to level out so we can shoot the missile off i start after burning to pick up some speed so i actually have the ability to catch him so he cut off his flight path a little bit i'm just trying to see if i can maybe lead the missile but this missile is too bad to do that so the second i notice he starts flying straight we shoot the missile off with the most amount of lead possible and that should be a good track. And that should be another kill. And it is. Back to the hangar he goes. Thank you T2 for the incredible bait. Couldn't have done it without you. And the last guy camps the airfield for about 3 minutes. And crashes into the ground. Absolutely incredible. He would try to use the ACM. It's very finicky. And as you can see it just doesn't pick up a lock half the time. I had better success by simply going through the search radar. And then selecting them myself. But at the point now he's too close. He notices me. I have to dodge someone else as well. So shooting the missile here in the head-on is basically a waste. And now I'm forced to turn. The Sarp 5 here is going to be engaging us. I can tell by the entire, well I can call it body language I guess. Try to get out of his nose and then we dive out. Make him go a little bit slower. And we're going to try to get to lower altitude to get more speed. And get into thicker air to make the missiles easier to dodge. So I simply go straight down. We pre-turn a little bit in the same way we did against the G91 in the previous clip. And just like that, the missile is defeated. But I know that he has a second one, because he hasn't fired any, any of them yet. He came head on with us, and we are the first one that he has engaged. So I know that there might be a second missile on the way. And the way he is flying is very much telling me that he wants to kill me. As I said, F3 hates. They are an enemy magnet. And people know that if they sit on your 6, eventually they will probably get a kill. If I get intercepted by someone else, or if I may be like... Make a little bit too much of a maneuver and I end up going 200 kilometers an hour in a span of 12 seconds. Now this guy is very much committed as you can tell and this is kind of the experience that you have in this plane. He starts breaking off somewhat. He starts getting engaged by one of my friendlies. Thank you very much for helping me out Mr. Donut Squad Abu Tudo or whatever. I tried to press uh, thank you here but apparently my 4 key doesn't work anymore so I couldn't do it. So thank you very much if you are watching and we are going to be engaging the TU4 here. Now... In hindsight, I just should have shot the AIM-7C here and why you'll see in a minute. But I thought that the VAU-2 was going to get there before my missile would. Uh, it definitely wouldn't have. But I thought that the VAU-2 might have missiles himself. Now he doesn't and, you know, kind of ended up wasting the match because of that. We crit him, we, we kill one of his gunners, which is good. But the VAU-2 is dead. The TU-4 is still alive and he is still going to be a nuisance at the end of the game. J29 comes in and I'm not sure which variant it is. If it's a D it doesn't have missiles. If it's an F it does. And if it does have missiles I need to be somewhat careful of him. Now, it looks like he doesn't have any on him. But that might also be a bug. Sometimes enemy planes they show no missiles. And then they still shoot one at you. So be very careful 
when a plane that should have missiles doesn't have any. Now, unless, of course, you see them shoot all of them off, and then it's a bit of a different story. Now, here we get a little bit of separation with the J-29, and the second he starts getting far enough away, we're going to turn around, and then we will merge and try to pull him into a bit of a spiral, depending on where the enemy players are, because I have a feeling that there's a guy very close to him. It's the guy that talked in chat, of course, and the guy that engaged me at the start of the match. So now... I have a feeling that this guy is just going to wait for me to get slow. So I'm going to play it a little bit differently. He's coming right at us. So I'm just going to take the head on here. I know that I outrange his guns. But he doesn't have any tracers. And he might just spray me down in the head on. So I do want to be careful. Because one of those 30 mils will send me back to the Shadow Realm. So we just kind of gauge the head on here. He doesn't want to take it whatsoever. I'm not going to try to shoot it anyway. No use. So I just kind of break off. I'm not sure if he still has one of those missiles left. Because he shot one at us. But what he does have is a red wing tip. With something white on it. Now of course we can't have that. Because there can only be one. J29 is now engaging the F-86. And because the Saab turned the other way. I have quite a bit of distance here. To engage the J29. And help out my teammates. So we go for the head on here. We miss our rounds. And then we just kind of fly away for a little bit. And because the Saab has so much distance. I'm able to engage the J29 again. But the issue is if I get on the 6 now of the J29. The Saab will simply lick me up. And I'm not a big fan of it. F-86 then pitches into the way I'm already flying. And I'm not, not roasting him or anything. He can't really go anywhere else. But it means that I can't engage him right now. Without opening myself up for the Saab. So I try to go for the head-on again. But this time he's already lined up. So he's probably going to take the head-on this time around. I'm going to try to shoot at long range. But he beats me to it. And I have to dodge a little bit. He dodges as well. Try to recommit. Don't really get a shot in. But here I have a pretty decent position. The J29 is engaging the F-86. So I should be free here to engage the Saab freely. I noticed that the Saab was playing kind of passive. So if I make a very aggressive line at the start of that fight. Or the start of that merge. I should be able to secure the 6 very easily. Because it just kind of catches him with his pants down. I was playing kind of passive. Keeping my speed. And he was expecting me to do so. And that's why he is playing it so passive as well. If he had known that I was going to pull in there. Uh, there's a very big likelihood that I still lose the fight. But of course it plays out very differently. And I can still break off. As long as he doesn't have a missile. But for now. I'm just going to try to keep his pants down for as long as possible. By keeping my speed a little bit. And securing my position. And at this point it's done deal. So we take off that wingtip. And he should do the same thing in a hangar. And then we start getting engaged. By the J29. Now it's a J29F again. And it didn't look like he had missiles. We go head on. We almost get sprayed down there. Very narrowly dodged. A little bit lucky. And we disengage. Now at this point I am dead. If I run away. So I need him to burn a little bit of speed first. Make him pitch up for us. And then. When he's going a little bit slower. And he's already going vertical. We can dive out. And get away from him. So we kind of drain his energy there. After the fight that he had. After the fight that we had as well. And now we can simply disengage. We're going to straight line it for a little bit. I just want to pick up a little bit more speed. I don't want to go too slow. And I'm in the clouds right now. I hope that he sees the same clouds as we do. And that he doesn't shoot a missile at us. And at this point we still have all the missiles on our rails as well. Which is kind of weighing us down. A little bit unfortunate. And then I notice the TU4. And I start kind of salivating at the thought that I might be able to shoot a missile at that guy. So here we start turning in slightly. I want the J29 to pitch up for us. So we can stall him out, spiral him up. And in the meantime, I'm going to be shooting a missile at the TU4. Now I'm not able to get a lock here just yet. Because the ACM only has 9 km range. And I notice that the TU4 is turning to the right. So we are going to shoot the missile to the right as well. But he's kind of leveling out. So I'm going to... Kind of shoot it center to where he is flying towards. Now the issue is that the J29 actually leaves us alone. He starts breaking off. So now we can't kill them both at the same time. TU4 however is not going to have a very good time with this one. He is going to be sent back to the hangar. And now we have to re-engage the J29. That's actually flying away from us. Now we don't have much fuel left. Which is going to be the main issue here. Because I have enough missiles, enough fuel. Uh, I end up strafing out the uh, TU4 that's going very slow mid-air. He only had one gunner left so pretty easy kill. And the J29 goes RTB. We then glide for a good 6 minutes. And you can tell the tickets have been killing themselves in the background. And there we have Mr. J29 again. Now this time we shoot the missile off. We lead it a little bit. But you know it's no real use. That's never going to track. And you know we are still kind of spiking him. But if he sees us here there's a chance that he will actually kill us. Because we don't have any energy now. So I'm kind of forced here to do something dumb. And take the fight despite not having any energy. 
So we're just gonna try to get the angle and position as quickly as possible. And after he's caught up in the fight, I'm simply going to run away and leave. We notice that he's going up again, just like the first time. And we can dive out and pick up some speed again. Now he is going to be able to catch us for a little bit. Because he will be able to cut us off. And he is going to be somewhat within gun range. So we just need to be careful. We don't need to panic. Because in the long run he should never be able to catch us. You can tell that he's getting about a kilometer away. We dodge his round. And the second he stops cutting us off. We start gaining separation again. And at this point I have him by the balls. There's no one around that can really kill us. So I just want to stay at about 1.1, 1.2 for now. So that he keeps shooting at us, keeps pitching up into us. So that we can actually stall him out. Now in the meantime, the tickets are of course draining themselves. Because they really enjoy that part, I guess. And we start getting a little bit more separation here. But just trying to keep him as vertical as possible. And I'm trying to not stall out myself. Because then it becomes an easy shot for him. So I'm keeping the turn up somewhat. And then he starts stalling and we start going for the shot. We dropped the, the missiles in hindsight. Not the best idea, but I was thinking about like dropping the AIM-7C. But I accidentally dropped the AIM-9B. So that's a little bit unlucky. Or just skill issue, I guess. So here, because he's so slow and because at high speed or high altitude, we should be able to just kind of pitch up here. We have a lot more AOA, pretty decent engine. And we should be able to just get out of his gun here. He doesn't even want to try. So... A little bit unlucky because now he dives away. And if I had an AIM-9B here, he definitely would have been dead. But instead, of course, we are going to get the ticket deluxe. And he is just going to dive away until the tickets run out. Yeah, I'm not going to blue ball you anymore. We're going to try to shoot the AIM-7C off. Uh, but, you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's not going to happen. A little bit unfortunate. He then breaks back off because he just doesn't want to engage us. And then the tickets kill themselves without any player interaction. And we lose the game. Absolutely incredible. I'm not so much salty about the loss. I just find it a shame that I can now not play out that fight anymore. Now this is the third or second game that I did in it. So I'm just kind of limit testing the missiles. First missile, never gonna track. Notice that instantly. And then we go for the second one. It's a Vautour at medium to high altitude. And he's essentially stalled out. So I know that he is going to be dying. Now... He's going to be dead, but right now I can't really go for anyone else because I have to keep him painted by the radar. And then we shoot a missile off on the Vautour. Probably not going to track, but a little bit of good fate. And then here is the whiff of the century, and I just missed the easiest shot in the world. I normally don't keep in these games too much, but I think that it shows enough. And I think it's important to show you these matches as well. Because at the start, especially with planes like this, which are... They have a bit of character to them, you know. I have to get used to the guns. I have to get used to the flight model. I know how to fly it roughly. But putting it into practice is of course a little bit different. So here is me struggling with the plane. Still trying to figure it out. And that's why it's at the end. Because it's not the most representable. But I do think that it showcases the plane quite well. So I'm going to keep it in regardless. Now here the G91 is chasing us. He has three missiles left probably. So I want to be somewhat careful of him. Because I know that if I have to dodge one missile. I can dodge it. If I dodge the second one, I'm probably going to be taking it right up my asshole. And I'm not a massive fan of that. So for now, I'm just going to keep it straight. We are going to run away, put it into a slight vertical. And get as much separation as humanly possible before we start turning around and re-engaging. Now we have some teammates around, which makes it actually possible for us to at least be somewhat aggressive. Now of course we don't want to overdo it, because then we still cope and die. But we are able to turn around and gaze the sunbot with a very fitting name of a plane. Because it's absolutely terrible. Go ahead on with the G91. Don't want to get hit by 50 gals. Dodge the Super Mysterio. But none of them are really engaging me as of yet. So I'm going to turn around relatively slowly. I want to keep my speed somewhat. But I still want to go and kill that Super Mysterio. The G91 is turning around for us however. So you know i don't want to get too slow in front of him so instead of going for the super mysterio we put it into a bit of a vertical see if we can actually do it and we're gonna bait this guy for the f104 that's about six kilometers away at this point so we put it into a bit of a spiral now i want him to go not head on with the 104 i want him to not see him so we pull him away from the 104 so in case he has an aim9b he might be able to kill him that way and if the g91 notices him then he has to turn around and give me his 6. So turns out it works out perfectly. And we can now re-engage both of these guys. So the G91 is dead. No use engaging him. And the J2 is going to be engaging the F86. Now I do want to be careful that I don't team kill him. So I'll wait for a decent opportunity here. That I can shoot a missile off. And right now 
the F-86 shouldn't pull straight ahead of him. And he doesn't. We get a kill, we free up his ass, and now we can run away again. He says, thank you, and I will say, you're welcome. And we go again into a bit of a vertical. Against place like this, it's actually pretty strong. Now, it's not fantastic, but you have a lot of options. Just killing them, them yourself is a bit of an issue. Now, again, it's the same as with the Bearcat. Flies very similarly, actually. You know, if you have a squad or you have some teammates that actually help you out, it can become pretty decent, but that's just a lot of 9.0 planes that absolutely rock your shit. Most of the 8.7s also not very fun to fight in this thing, as long as you are alone anyway, because they just don't lose any speed. You have to play this thing cautiously, you have to play it very slow, but you have to keep your speed at all times and know when you can all in and cash in that speed. If you do it at the wrong time, you essentially just die on the spot, which is of course... Not the plan of my, my game right now. G91. Going decently slow. And I feel like I should be able to get a pretty easy shot here. But we just miss. Because we can't aim the thing. And we have to fly straight again. J6 coming in. And he is definitely going to be an issue. So I'm going to do the dishonorable thing. And use my teammates here that are, are ground pounding as of now. And that's what you have to do. I cannot keep up with a J6. Especially if there's an F86 right next to him. So, for now, slide vertical, try to get away from the subsonics. J6 switches targets, which now means that I can actually turn around and again re-engage them. This plane is very one-dimensional. It's very boring to make a video on. And I think you notice this throughout the video, that I'm kind of just doing the same thing over and over and over again. Because this plane doesn't have many options in most cases, especially because almost every game that I did had 9.3s in them. Now we whiff another incredibly easy shot, absolutely incredible. But this plane, you know, even at 9.0, there's a lot of planes that essentially counter your entire existence, making it quite painful to play. I don't think we can down tier it anymore, really. It's like it's one of those planes that, yeah, it's kind of bad, like with the F8F, but should it really be 8.7? No, not really. You know, so it's a bit of a in a tough spot. I hope that this video portrays it well enough. And I hope that you at least enjoyed it. If not, thank you all for watching. And you'll see me all in the next one. <laughs>